Hey there YouTubers, so this video is going to discuss whether you should choose the i5-12600KF or the i5-13400F. Now, I just recently got the i5-13400F and I have the i5-12600K, which is, you know, basically the same thing as the KF, except it doesn't have integrated graphics. So I feel like I can uh, tell you guys uh, about this a little bit, right? So let's uh let's get into it now performance uh i5 12600 kf is you know pretty much superior in everything all right gaming there's only a few games out there the i5 13400 f has a higher fps and on the majority of games uh from what i have seen on my own channel and you know looking at other videos uh, there's about a 2% uh, you know, average of the i5-12600KF over the i5-13400F. So nothing uh, massive, right? If you're already getting you know, 400 FPS well, you know, with the i5-13400F, then the i5-12600KF, you might get you know, 408. So nothing you know, super significant. Editing. This is where, you know, these two are, are a little more separated. Um, you know, one thing with these processors, maybe you guys don't know or you do know, is when you increase power limits, usually that will uh, improve your processing time of videos. Um, where the difference really comes with these two that makes it more significant is being able to overclock the i5-12600KF, which will, um, you know, further distance it from the i5-13400F. Um, you know, there's other stuff out there we could talk about, uh, but, you know, I'm leaving it with these three things. Now, benchmarks, all the benchmarks I've done, and then I also went and looked at some as well, 7 to 28% greater for the i5-12600K over the i5-13400F. So, that matters to you, um, whether it's multi-core or single core, you know, whether it's XTU, Intel's XTU, whether it's Cinebench R20, R23, or, you know, CPUs or benchmark, you're going to find that they all say that the i5-12600KF is uh, going to be better. All right. CPU prices pretty much in the same ballpark, right? Uh, today, looking at Newegg, both the i5-12600KF and the i5-13400F were 229 I bought mine for 209 so $20 difference between the two. And let's get into some more detail. Really, you know, these are the items that, uh, in my opinion, may guide you from one to the other. Now, one thing with that price for the i5-12600KF doesn't come with a CPU cooler where the i5-13400F does. So, you know, if everything else was the same, you are definitely uh, saving money with the i5-13400F. But I'm going to recommend you spend at least $20 to get a better cooler. Uh, I have videos out there where I've done benchmarks with the stock cooler. And then I did them with a Vitru V5, which is a used to be a $20 CPU cooler. Now it's $35. Performance, you know, increased just by replacing that CPU cooler. Um, and so that, you know, that's kind of a, uh, a big thing. Who knows these benchmarks, it, what CPU cooler they're using. Uh, they really don't ever state it or show you the gear. We try to do that here on the channel. So that you guys can at least, you know, go, okay, that's what he has. Uh, so i5-12600KF does not come with CPU cooler. You're going to have to at least spend $20 on it to, uh, you know, get something for everyday use. But if you're going to overclock and run it continuously, you're going to have to spend over $100. And uh, that's either a good air cooler or we're talking, um, you know, water cooler i5 12600KF runs best in Z690 or Z790. Well, that's because of overclocking. Can't overclock in the B660 or B760. 
But if you don't need that feature, you can save a little bit of money by buying a comparative B660 or B760. You don't want to, you know, be cheap on these and buy the cheapest B660 out there, cheapest B760, right? The i5-13400F, depending on the motherboard you want, you may be forced to get a B760 or Z790 if you buy one that does not have the ability to update the BIOS without a CPU installed, all right? So... Uh, motherboards really that are out there that you'll see this feature on that are, you know, affordable. Uh, they've got them from Gigabyte, Eris, ASRock, all right. Companies that, uh, you know, some of them have them, some don't. MSI, uh, and then Asus, I'm not sure at what point uh, they have it. I think they have it on their higher end stuff, but uh, none of the, you know, cheaper stuff I bought has had the ability to update the BIOS without a CPU or GPU or RAM installed. Now, what does that matter? Well, um, you're going to install that 13th gen in a 600 series motherboard. It's most likely not going to work. A year from now, you know, another story when the BIOSes are updated on these motherboards as they ship out. But uh, your other option is a 12th gen CPU. So if you've got one of those handy, it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's 600, 700 that you go with, right? But if you have to spend money on the cheapest 12th gen, which is the Celeron G6900, that's about 60 bucks, uh, that also is going to add to your prices if you go with the 600. Uh, this makes, you know, 700 series and 600 series almost the same. Uh, so look for those motherboards out there, if you're looking at 600, that do have the ability to update the BIOS without a CPU installed, okay? Now, 700 series motherboards, they're currently running about $10 to $60 more than previous 600 series motherboards. Two examples, Gigabyte's B660M DS3H, $109. The one that I bought uh, recently, B760M DS3H, comes in at $119. Another similar one uh, on the high end, Eris Elite AX Z690, 199 Eris Elite AX Z790 comes in at 259 so a $60 price difference. Another thing, uh, power consumption, that's going to be greater with the i5-12600K. Um, you know, substantially more for the, uh, the CPU. But then there's also, uh, you may have spent more money on a CPU cooler to cool it. And so you're using a little more electric there. Maybe you've had to add more case fans. Um, you know, is power expensive where you live? This might factor into your decision on whether you should buy the i5-13400F or the i5-12600KF. Um, and we missed a little thing here because we're not talking about just the regular old K. We're talking about the KF, right? All right. So both CPUs require GPU. Uh, that's what that F stands for in the uh, the title. It doesn't have any graded graphics. Now, uh, to summarize this, folks, this is one of those cases really where, you know, I could build comparative systems uh, and they cost, you know, the exact same price between these CPUs. Uh, maybe I can't overclock on one uh, with the i5-12600K if I don't want to. Um, and then maybe I bought the 700 series motherboard with the i5-13400F and those prices turned out to be almost exactly the same. So um, one thing you'll have to do is go out shopping. Once you uh, determine, you know, what motherboard you want, look at the 600 series and 700 series versions of it. If you feel like, you know, these CPUs are basically the same, that may, you know, change your opinion and you may go with the i5-12600KF. Uh, Cooling-wise, you know, you need to spend at least $20. If you're not going to overclock, then, you know, that's pretty much, uh, in my opinion, a, a, a dead heat, right, between these two. If you, if you would like to overclock, uh, then you've got to factor in, hey, this is going to cost me, you know, $100 more. Um, so it, it might not be such a good thing uh, for you. Or it might not be affordable. But uh, yeah, so there's the video, folks. I hope you got something out of it. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.